Time is a strange thing, and putting together this episode of the podcast makes my brain feel like it's been time traveling and my thoughts have not been coming together in a linear fashion. Let me explain. I kept getting this strange feeling of deja vu while I was editing this episode where I had a conversation with Defeated Sanity who has a new record dropping this Friday, November the 22nd called Chronicles of Lunacy. And the reason why I kept having this feeling is because some of the things we talked about, it's things that we've talked about on this podcast recently. However, I've been away in Germany, so every episode that came out this month was pre-recorded and already scheduled to upload, so I didn't have to worry about working while I was out of the country. So you might remember episodes like, does listening to metal make us tougher or the episode about deathcore and the ever continuing arms race of weird animal noises that are happening. And I thought when I, when I wrote those scripts that those were reactions to things that were happening, for instance, the toughness episode, I thought that was a reaction to comments on the culture war episode, things to like, you know, don't you remember back in the good old days of metal when it was full of tough guys and none of these woke snowflakes or, you know, the death core episode I felt like was a reaction to singles that I had heard recently. But then I listened back to this episode, which was actually recorded way back in August, and we're talking about some of these same topics. So I wonder if Lilla from Defeated Sanity might have planted a little seed in my brain that sprouted later in time. And then this conversation is happening after that sprout due to the weird way that podcasting time works. Or did I perhaps already have this in there and they were triggered by recent events i'm not so sure but it sure is fun to think about almost as fun as listening to this super jazzy brutal death metal from defeated sanity let me know what you think about our conversations about the nature and the demands of physics with brutal death metal about the ever evolving arms race of extremity in metal and is being a badass required or is composition more important? These are the things we cover in episode 193 of Heavy Metal Philosophy. Josh und Lille, welcome in Heavy Metal Philosophy. Wie geht's? Good. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it in English for your sakes, Josh, and also for mine because I will quickly run out. Uh, ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Gute. Ah, very good. Uh, uh, <laughs> All right. So Defeated Sanity. You've got a new record coming out this November called Chronicles of Lunacy. Now, I understand, Josh, you're in California. Lilla, you're in Germany. Guitar players in New York. How do y'all handle that? I don't know. It's like uh, <laughs> the, the internet kind of works like this, you know. The, the the I think there's like twenty thousand bands that do it like that, but they only just record stuff and have never met in their life. But we actually are in a position where we have a we have a name behind us where we can say, okay, we will 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 all meet in South Africa and and play do uh, two rehearsals. And then we move throughout the world together, and and that's what we do. You know, everybody practices their stuff at home, and and then we get together. We 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 do two rehearsals, and then the rest uh, uh, happens during the shows. You know, I mean, mm. it almost sounds unprofessional, like um, learning your songs uh, while you're playing shows, but it, <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that, actually. Well, it seems awfully impressive to me because your music is, is kind of jazzy and free a little bit as much as it is brutal death metal. And it's not so 
typical verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus so i assume you guys must have to really do your homework before you meet for those two rehearsals absolutely absolutely Definitely. like you everybody needs to know their part for sure it's it's just about the fi fine tuning in the end you know mm. so do you like send each other the stems and, and then you just practice your part well, you, we at least for, for my part, I usually just play along to the album. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other guys, they have they have guitar pro and stuff as well to be able to reinforce what they're doing, obviously. Well, Lily is not so applicable for drums, but, but yeah. For writing the, the album, I, I assume you guys send each other your ideas and then bounce them back and forth, maybe text each other, hey, what about this, what about that? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um... Uh, I gotta say, I, I, I hate this, um, s the space that is between us, you know, like I, I, I love to, to just check in with everybody every week, uh, at the rehearsal room and go like, you got any risk, play me something, you know? And then that's, <laughs> that's how it would be. And, um, that was for example, uh, for the passages album that, that happened a lot, you know, where was very collaborative and um uh for dharma it also happened a lot that jacob just had a lot of like bass ideas or, like just riff ideas and i'm like what show we could just jam them and i'm like oh that's nice and now it's more like you get like a midi file and for me it's like it takes a lot of imagination to go like oh yeah i can make this into something or you like it it's it, it's cooler when you're together and there's like I don't know it could be like he plays me something and like yeah I don't I don't know what do you mean it was like just try to play it and then you try to play it on the guitar and oh shit like if we change this then I, I can make it into something you know it's, it's it's just better than than having to do this MIDI stuff but yeah it it that's how it is you know everybody. Has the, I remember one of uh, Vaughn's uh, great, like, or like his almost like his debut kind of riff for, for the new album was basically an idea that he recorded with another band that he played with. And um, they said, uh, like, we don't like it. And he, he, he played it to me. I was like, yeah, my guys don't like this, the song or whatever. And I was like, well, yeah, but that last riff is fucking amazing. Let's just use this. So it's like, I, I like to hear the full vision sometimes, you know, and it's like, it's like the, the ending of this new song is basically we just took that ending. We took that riff. And um, actually, uh, one of Josh's riffs happened to be on the new album uh, the same way, you know, I'm already a fan of that riff and the, the, the whole arrangement that Josh actually then. I basically just took it and put it in the new stuff. Uh, is that especially true for the rhythm section, your, your drums, bass? Because when I hear y'all do those those jazzy uh, w w transitions, it, it feels to me like y'all didn't record them to a click in a studio. It feels to me when I listen to it, like the rhythm section in a room looking at each other. And it's like, here comes the roll on the drums, followed by that nice scalar bass run, and then the riff comes back into it. Or is, or am I just imagining hearing that and it actually was to a click in a studio? You're imagining it, but I'm very glad that you're imagining it because um, that's how I want it to be, you know? And um, I think the reason why with the rhythm section is that Jacob and I, we did that. Like Jacob and I, we played we like because we wouldn't have a guitar player in our city here of Berlin when he still lived here in Berlin. Um, and we would literally do, you know, other band, other bands might say, "Oh, the guitars are not here. Why uh, we can't even practice?" And like we were like, "Fuck that! Let's do a drum and bass rehearsal." We did that for years. Like every, every Thursday, that was the drum and bass rehearsal day. We'd play the whole set and then we'd work on new stuff. 
only uh, bass and drums. So we did that for years. So Jacob and I, we already know what's, you know, oh, there's this riff, but now I want this bass lick together with a Tom thing. We also, you know, like, I know Jacob is a huge Rush fan or something. Rush would do things like that. And Watchtower and Cynic would do that too. So, um, yeah, we're like we're we're bandmates, you know. Like for yeah. we we've we've been bandmates for like twenty years. So we we just know how to work together. Amazing. Yeah, I, I would have thought you were in a room when I heard it. And, uh, let me confess, I'm I'm new to the band. You know, I I was one of those guys that I always listened to my favorite records all the time, and when I started this show, it sort of exposed me to a lot of new music that I wouldn't have listened to before. And as soon as I heard your band, I was like, oh, they're these guys are playing like a lot of jazz stuff, and it's not just let's do things that jazz players do. I can I can hear that. You, you mentioned Watchtower, for instance. I can hear that. And that makes me want to ask you less of these, you know, musician technical questions and more philosophical question. Why brutal death metal? I'm, I'm sure Lilla will have his own his own stuff to interject with. But, um, I mean, it's it's to us, at least, it's pretty uh, indisputable that brutal death metal is arguably the most extreme music on the planet. Yeah. Um. All th- all things considered, you know, between the drums and the the crazy riffing, like watching a guitar player play brutal death metal is an experience in and of itself, you know. Yes. Um, of course, the vocals add that level of extremity as well. Um. So it's just it never gets boring to play. You know what I mean? Now, e- even if we play the same songs every day for a month straight, they never get boring. One because. <laughs> We, we, we don't play to a click live. We don't play to like backing tracks. We don't do any of that stuff. So every day there's an element of, Oh, like we're just, we're, we're at war with phys- with physics. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's exciting. You know what I mean? And it's just like, uh, the, like the, the brutality of it, but also the musical intricacy that like not many bands really do this kind of crazy stuff musically. Um, it's just, it's just exciting, man. It do, it doesn't get boring, ever. Yeah, yeah. I, but it's interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting point. And um, I could add. Um, for me, it's almost like, in a way, it's it's just a unique connection of like body and soul because like at the same time we're physically so exhausted when we're playing and we see people are pitting people are you know we are physical the the fans are physical you know it's it's that that's the bodily part you know it's like demanding and shit um but at the same time the cerebral thing also happens like the intellectual thing that you know where it's like things are changing and um and even the the for for me it's very important like a lot of people actually miss the the soul of the whole thing but i don't know uh, josh like for me a uh, uh, a thing that was really amazing i watched i watched that ending of the vietnam show mm-hmm. and um you know we did that ending with the slowdown of the drums and then we 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 faded into that bach outro yeah. I was just like, I could just see the, like everybody loved the show and like the the high energy and, and then everybody started hugging each other. Like it's it's a very cool video. You should see that. It's like, uh, you see like K hugging everybody. Yeah, I did this. Like, uh, I, yeah. I got these guys to Vietnam and it, like I don't know. It's just like, there's a soulfulness to it. And it's yeah, it's body and soul and brains. In a way, I don't know. Sometimes I, I I feel bad about not listening to a lot of classical and jazz because I know that's what grown-ups should do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? But then, I don't know. You, you always get drawn to, like, it's just in my veins to just mainly listen to listening to 
extreme uh, death metal stuff, you know. And um, mm-hmm. there's, as I said, Rush or, or uh, Symphony X or, or Watchtower. That that's awesome too, but that does not have the same level of you know yeah. it doesn't have that so like when i look at josh like like with his glasses open it's like uh, fucking dripping <laughs> with sweat it's like it's like fucking war you know but at the same time as i said you know there's, there's the intellectual part too so in a way for us i, th- I think it's the best music on planet earth mm-hmm. yeah I, I couldn't agree more yeah and yeah, to to that point as well, like like Lilla said, it being just a, such an energetic kind of music. Um, where was I going with that? It's a, it's the transference of energy between the band and the audience a lot of nights. You know what I mean? Like when we when we're getting towards the end of the set and we feel like we can't even we can't even get through this set anymore. It's like nine hundred degrees <laughs> on stage and stuff. But if the crowd is just so like enthusiastic, like that pushes us that extra ten twenty percent to give it our all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, they, they always told me growing up as I got older, I would get over this like it was a phase or something. And I would start listening to softer music, maybe country music or something. It's like complete opposite. The older I get, <laughs> the heavier and crazier I want it to be. But the reason why I asked that question is because I can hear that you guys are capable of you know, it was funny you said uh, adults should be listening to jazz now. It's like I could hear that you're capable of playing whatever you want, basically. And then you choose this this genre of music that most people cannot tolerate and certainly yeah. can't appreciate. You know, there's a lot of technicality in brutal death metal. But if you're not, it's such an acquired taste. If you're not in it, you can't you couldn't possibly even notice how technical it is it's true yeah there's yeah there, there's like a barrier you have to break through in order to be able to appreciate all of the intricacies um it's like you have to be on the other side of that wall of sound you know what i mean if that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah and it, we're there dude but but also <laughs> i can hear that it's there's you still want to do something more so for instance it might be one of the the most crushing riffs with their just uh, vocals and where every other band would da, 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 on the snare. Instead, I hear you do a, a roll or maybe a polyrhythm on the bass drum while doing more of like a four on the floor on the cymbals. You don't do those typical brutal death metal moves. Yeah, not all the time because, you know, <laughs> Sometimes I catch my, like, I've always been catching myself. The, uh, Josh and I, we've been talking about this uh, uh, right before uh, uh, we got on here, you know. Um, like, as soon as I got to know Discourse, I was like, this, ha- this is how it has to sound. This mm-hmm. is, like, this is the best shit I've ever heard, you know. Mm-hmm. But... <clears throat> Luckily enough, I I just I just realized, yo, wait, they already did that, so like we have to do it, we have to do something different, you know, and um, it, yeah, sometimes it is it, it is a very brutal riff, and then I don't play double bass, I you know I I play like a a, a, a Maybe, a, yeah, as you said, a polyrhythm or like a, a syncopated snare or a play just like a funky groove in a way or like a weird made up groove, you know. Um, and, and yeah, even the vocals do things that, you know, the bands we look up to in like when it comes to style, you know, when because when it comes to the style, it's there's no denying that it's you know it has always been about the, like the development and the discourage and you know also the old school uh, uh, brutal death metal bands like um, Suffo and stuff and, and just Morbid Angel and whatever, but um, this is the style 
but now we want to kind of innovate and we want to make the style we want to be uh, true to the style but totally change it as well hmm. you know so that i basically we are generating um musical ideas not really listening to what these guys would be doing but we kind of want the same impact the same intention but come up with our own motives you know it goes back to that feeling you were talking about earlier you know you talked about the people hugging each other after your set is over it's like you don't see that at a pop show or like an indie rock show you know, some some of the the best artists you might you might feel something akin to like a spiritual experience but you don't see that camaraderie that comes from the pit yeah i i i don't know i don't know for me uh i've seen uh i've seen this michael jackson documentary and mm. i mean people fucking drop like not a, like it's not only girls that dropped you know so like they stop like with man in the mirror and then they they uh end on that really open court and it seems like it's forever and stuff as like you see like they collected um footage of people dropping yeah because it's so overwhelming so i don't know if that's true what you're saying but i mean of course the the pit and the sweat and everything is a is a very special thing you know yeah yeah but, i've got a funny story about that what i would say is those people were dropping looking at Michael Jackson, but they weren't really hugging each other. They were in the audience. They were oh, yeah. a part of it yeah. together. Now I got a funny yeah. story because I've seen that same footage. Uh, I, before everything came out, I was actually a Michael Jackson fan when I was a kid. You know, I, I love all that old R and B stuff, especially like the Jackson five and things like that. And I remember Fuck being, yeah a little kid and and watching those Michael Jackson concerts. And like you said, it wasn't just the women that were fainting. It was the yeah. men as well. And I remember looking at that footage and seeing those men faint and kind of judging them. Like, look at this dude fainting. Cause he saw Michael Jackson. Now you fast forward yeah. 15 years later and I'm at a Metallica concert and I got right up on the rail. So I'm like arms hanging over the barricade, you know, four feet between me and the stage and Hetfield walks up to the edge of the stage. And I was like, hell yeah, Hetfield. And I, I threw up the, you know, the horns and he looked down at me and he threw the horns back and just all feeling in my legs left. And I had to like, hold on to the rail. I was like, Oh God. And I, 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 I didn't, I didn't faint, but I, after the concert, I remember judging those dudes at the Michael Jackson concert. I was like, nah, Maybe I shouldn't judge those dudes because I almost lost it. You know, I thought it was going to go the way like, you know, one would do that to you. It's just like such a fucking overwhelmingly great song. You know, it, it, I, you know, I've never seen Metallica Life because I, I kind of, to me, they were kind of dead after, after justice, you know, but uh, recently I saw like them playing Antarctica and they played like creeping death and there was only 200 people there. And I was like, fuck, maybe it would be awesome to like, it's probably awesome to see that because I've, I've been, I've been six years old when I became a fan, you know? So it's, there's probably some like nostalgia and yeah, it's just, it gets emotional, you know? And yeah. with a song like one, uh, yeah, it's probably very, overwhelming experience yeah to see one of my heroes look look at me and then give me the medal back it was it was overwhelming and, and i will vouch for them because you know yeah the i don't really like the new records either but mm -hmm. seeing seeing them live you know th those old songs with that live energy it's still it's still worth now with the way ticket prices are now you know i saw them for 80 bucks mm -hmm. or something back in the day but so that was definitely worth it. I don't know that I would pay today's Metallica prices to see them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. So recently <laughs> I saw Hannibal Corpse 
with Immolation, Dark Funeral, and Black Anvil. And that ticket was 40 bucks, general admission. So I mm-hmm. that in my mind is like this is that's value. So when I see guys having three hundred, four hundred dollar ticket prices for nosebleeds, I'm like, ah, I can't do that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh it's I don't get like I, I always ask myself who's stuffing their pockets, you know, because there's already I don't know how many people come to 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 a whatever, you know, like these these concerts and then they ask for some of them ask for like these special seats for like thousands and shit. And it's mm-hmm. like who's who, who who who's getting rich here? Maybe they're doing that because uh they can't really earn uh anything by by selling records that much anymore you know yeah yeah well let's get back to to your music so i keep harping on on this jazz thing because let's let's do some more philosophy here i have this philosophy about art in general much less music just all art i think you spend your first your beginning phase just trying to get the technical skill to do the thing you know play this chord it's minor, so it sounds sad. You know, use this brush stroke and it creates this sort of effect on the canvas. You know, use this emotion when you're acting and, and you create this sort of scene. You get all the technical stuff done in your beginning, but once you reach a certain level of technical proficiency, everything after that is just choices. All good art after that is just a series of making choices. When I'm painting this, I want to use blue here instead of red because of this reason, or I'm going to make this choice with the character in this scene, or I'm going to make this choice with the scale I'm going to use over this chord to create the sort of mood that I'm after. And so so I want to ask you about some of the choices you've made on this new record, because the, the last record had real like alien sounds to the, to the scale runs. And this one's quite a bit chuggier. It still has the nice technicality, but less of the alien sounds. Was that something you wanted to just like, Hey, I, we did that. Let's do, let's go this way now. Or is it just where, what you were feeling at the time? D- did you think about that choice? How did that come about? Josh, maybe we can make it about lyrics since you left it open. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, just, just to speak quickly about the music, um, yeah, it just ended up being like the, our our previous album, The Sanguinary Impetus, was very, uh, I guess you could say, strange in certain regards. Um, there was a lot of interesting choices made musically that were a bit more outside the box than we even normally would have tended to go before that album. So this album was kind of about like reining things in to go back and kind of not restore, but just kind of harken back to more the core original Defeated Sanity sound with obviously still some twists and innovation in there. Um, but yeah. And then when it came to the lyrics, we <laughs> originally, I was almost joking that we could make like the self-titled defeated sanity album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. Cause, yeah. Cause the, the whole album is about uh, delusions and basically how the human brain is humanity's worst enemy. Yes. Um, so every song is about some different instance where the brain can be corrupted either by an internal or outside force. Um, so like the odor of sanctity is basically an example of like religious fervor and how it can corrupt the mind into believing things that aren't true, but in a very specific example with the stigmata. Um, and then there's other songs too. Like we have one that's about uh, being infected with rabies and what it does internally to a person's brain, you know? Um, and there'll be more examples of that as the, as the songs come out and the album is released. But uh, yeah, we just wanted to uh, kind of make a, make an album where lyrically we're, we're writing about stuff that's as twisted as the music and not just your run of the mill serial killer uh, mm-hmm. warship stuff that everybody does, you know? That answers one of the questions I was going to have later mm-hmm. the, the the album title chronicles, of lunacy and then the band's name is defeated sanity so it's like this theme this reoccurring theme but you're saying it's like uh, it's really come home on this one yeah yeah it's, yeah definitely it's uh 
if there could have been a uh, self-titled defeated sanity album this would have been it but we were like nah <laughs> um, yeah and it, it took us forever to think of an album title because we also kind of wanted to we, we we have this kind of thing in the past where we have album titles like psalms of the moribund chapters of repugnance passages into deformity so it's like it has this kind of like not a template but it's just it rolls off the tongue a certain way and we wanted to go back to that um so chronicles chapters passages it's like uh yeah. it's like installments prelude. you know what I mean? yeah movement yeah prelude same thing um it's all it kind of has that musical connotation yeah speak speaking of lyrics I, I read somewhere that you were early on lyrically inspired by Brodequin and I had those guys on. I'll ask you the same question that I asked them. It's like when you, you know their their stuff is really historical, and when you have something important to say like that, it's it's a it's a funny thing to me when when you choose a genre like brutal death metal where nobody can understand yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, um, I I think. If we're talking about the vocals, um, I think in the, like, I remember in the beginning of making this album, I was thinking, oh yeah, we should make a super ultra guttural nasty album, you know? And, um, but then we wrote the lyrics and we were like, eh, but this is too good to not be heard you know because if, if you listen like if you um read along to the to the lyrics for the new album i would say every word will definitely be there like um even if you if you don't have the lyrics some some words might reach you but i think yes. if you if you open the lyric sheet if, if you have that in front of you there will be no second guessing this time. So um, Josh and I kind of came to the conclusion together, like, okay, this is gonna kind of be the style of this album. Uh, make it about pronounced, but still true to the style, brutal death metal vocals. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that's something that um, if you uh, pay attention to it, it it will be very clear. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing with uh, brutal death metal in particular. I feel like it's kind of like a dying art form. Whereas you know, you get a lot of albums where it, it, you get the feeling like it was like vocals first, lyrics later, sort mm -hmm. of a vibe. Um, yeah. Obviously that, that, that wasn't the case on this album. It was all very, we, we took a year to write all the vocal parts and the lyrics for this album. Um, yeah. So it was, it's all coldly calculated. Every syllable hits on the, the appropriate beat, things like that, you know? Um, and it's, it, it's a fine line to try to straddle, like keeping that absolutely like really sick guttural tone, but also being able to pronounce words. Yeah. It's, but it, it like harkens back to like old Chris Barnes, you know, like butchered at birth, tomb of the mutilated. Um, it was like this, like arguably some of the sickest death metal vocals ever, but you can read along to the lyrics and he's saying them, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, e even on uh, development, on uh, molesting, it's like, yeah. okay, they're singing them a little less, but Ruben is singing them a little less, but you can't, the, at least the, the syllables definitely add up. So yeah, yeah, definitely. That, that even is, is awesome. And um, yeah, what happened at, like what happened after Brodekin and development was basically people oh let's write a little story and then not not sing that you know yeah and so of course uh that decreases the value of of the mm -hmm. lyrics and um i don't know we like we're kind of trying to change that a little bit on this album at the same time, uh, I can also say though that I I I, I also love these um, lyricless uh, bands too. Like, but it's it's you, you just don't read the lyrics, you know. Like, why even write lyrics if it's if it's just uh, noises, you know? But it's yep. 
then it's a different art form. It's about like what kind of noises you can get out of your throat, you know? It's, uh... Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, we talk about this a lot, you know, killing time on the tour bus and stuff like as far as like being philosophical with like the role of uh, vocals in brutal death metal, that obviously has its time and place to do like ultra guttural, like definitely no words or phrases in there sort of sounds. Um, but I, I personally feel, and I know Lily agrees that with defeated that there's so much musical interest intricacy to be had with the vocals that it would almost be a waste to not utilize lyricism to add a new musical dimension and mm -hmm. to fur further complicate and, uh, decorate the song vocally. You know what I mean? As opposed to them just being like yeah. a texture at all times that, that like I make it a point to have like kind of a pretty aggressive vocal style so that the rhythmic aspect of it is very punchy, you know, mm. like it's another instrument a hundred percent. Yeah. That's, that, that's my favorite kind of death metal vocals. It's a, a, a percussive sort of sound. It's, it seems just like an instrument as well. And you guys, you're that kind of band where you got to listen to it more than once. And then those things will start popping out. It's, it's funny because the time of this recording, it's the weekend after Niall's new record came out. And, you know, mm -hmm. first, first listen, I don't know what that guy's talking about, but every time he would say feces because of that, that single that they dropped, I heard it. Maybe, maybe it's just cause I don't hear the word feces and death metal very often, but it would, it would pop out. <laughs> Like, oh, he's talking about he's talking about the apes shoving feces again. <laughs> but, but but it's also like learning a language too. You have to be familiar with it. So for instance, when I when I hear a German say Arbeit, I'm like, oh, he's talking about work. But then the rest of the sentence maybe I don't understand, you know, because it's I'm not quite as familiar. You have to you have to have this familiarity with the more extreme music to to fully appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, there, like like I was saying earlier, there's kind of like a layer that has to be penetrated in order to kind of gain access to all of the all of the musical intricacies going on behind the scenes of brutal de or death metal in general. I would say you have to be able to be like it has to be within your musical language to get into it. You know? Yeah, yeah, and you, metal grabs me. And, uh, I always ask everybody I interview the same question back to philosophy, you know, do you believe in free will or not? And I always tell people I don't because metal itself is what made me say, ah, there's no free will because it just grabbed me and I had no choice in the matter. I didn't decide like, okay, this is what I'm going to do now. First time I heard Metallica one, da -da 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 -da, I was like, what is that? Life was different after that. But there was mm -hmm. a long there was a long time after that where there was a certain barrier I didn't cross. You know, I didn't get into Cannibal Corpse till much much later. I had to be slowly exposed over time, and there were bands that that helped break down those barriers, like Opeth, for instance. You know, I heard Blackwater Park, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden the growling is is attractive to me, which allows me to listen to other bands. So I I feel like you is it like there's a multiple step process that happens to happen. First of all, metal has to grab you. If, if you're not into like Metallica style metal, you'll never ever be into this like done. But then at least for me, there was also steps along the way that had to happen where I could have easily have been filtered out. Uh, yeah, let's put it this way. Like, I mean, the way that I got into metal is almost kind of different or what you could say, I guess is accelerated. So like, I got into like hard rock and heavy metal music pretty early. I was like in elementary school, like third grade, like maybe six years old, seven years old, kind of like Lilith. But I found Cannibal Corpse really early. Like I had mm. to have been like nine or 10 when I first heard Cannibal Corpse at a rough estimate. And immediately I liked it. I didn't need wow. that. I didn't, I didn't need to go through like multiple tiers of different extremities to appreciate Cannibal Corpse right away is interesting um so i didn't have that standard like oh you gotta say you started with black sabbath and oh you moved to iron maiden metallica and then oh what's this like uh i don't even know uh 
th- then you get into say uh death morbid angel and then you get like cannibal corpse and deicide it was just straight from i don't know drowning pool to cannibal corpse <laughs> <laughs> did you have did you have uh like religious family or upbringing at all no not really <laughs> uh, see, I had I, I was raised by fundamentalist Christians, so there was also an oh, added component, you know, where that this that's the bad stuff. You know, it, I was already being told that I was going to go to hell for listening to Metallica and Megadeth, you know, but then yeah. that that was definitely a step too far, and I had to admit to myself that I didn't believe anymore before I was ever able to give myself that chance to listen to those bands, and then it was like, yeah. Okay, now let's listen to Behemoth. All right, I, you know now I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, your your place in hell is already reserved. <laughs> I like the yeah. sound of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's got John Barbus right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so here, here's your place, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I. Uh, yeah, I I don't know how it would have been but i i actually started uh it, it, start, it was very i piled on you know i i started literally with the most cliche way you can listen to metal it's it's just iron maiden then next step metallica overkill testament and then one step more is slayer and then i got to know death and obituary and uh, i mean all <clears throat> all the bands that are similar as well you know and i don't know and then 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 cannibal corpse i guess would be the next level and after that comes only the the brutal death that we know you know slam and and um yeah what we're doing i guess that Mm -hmm. to me that's the that's the way that you always pile on and that that lineage of bands it seems like it's they were all listening to the bands before them and going I like this aspect of what they do. Can we do that more? Whether it's, I mm-hmm. like the speed. So can we play faster and you get thrash and speed metal? It's like, and then the guys that listen to thrash were like, I like that, but I want it to be heavier. And you start to get, you know, the death metal. And then guys listen to those death metal bands after that, you know, it's like, let's make it really brutal. Let's focus on the stuff that we really like about this music. And so yes. I, I see this progression of things getting heavier and heavier. And now I wonder, like, can it really get any heavier? I, the, a big the guitars pro- can't a big be, problem. they can't be down tuned anymore. You can't, we've reached maximum efficiency when it comes to like sweeping and you know, yeah. And double like, bass. And, and like, if you, if you lower, if, if you drop tuning anymore, like only elephants will be able to discern the rift. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing is like, yeah, the the deeper it gets all the time, like it's just I don't know, like it's that's not the only component, you know what I mean? Yeah, and Close, yeah. You know, like drop drop G like some people are doing now or something when you're on like an H string or so. I don't even know what people are doing anymore because that's so far outside of defeated sanity's musical language, you know. Yep, yeah, yeah. It's um I I look into the the really deep into the the content of each band you know like i don't even hear anymore okay they sound really good because it it feels like everybody can sound quite good you know like it's there's there's no bad demos anymore like there were in the 90s or the 80s you can uh, everybody can get like i don't know drummer from hell and it will sound already like uh, is this real drums or is this programmed i don't know you know, um, all this stuff is um, almost not interesting to me. And I I feel um, our band s- might suffer a little bit from um, the heavy metal community's fixation on just like very scratching the surface kind of aspect. Oh, this guy is really fast. Uh, this guy hits really hard, man. Uh, 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 
I don't know, these are really tons of risks, man. Or just, I don't know, this guy is really strong and he hits himself with the microphone. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, I've never like it. It sounds stupid, but I've never really cared about that. I've, I've really cared about the, the order of the notes and the, how a riff clicks with a beat. So I'm, I was never really about the badass uh, things, you know, and also the, I've, I've never liked the fight scenes in star Wars. I like I like the story, you know, mm. like it's, it, it, that's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talk, talking about the arc that the, a character makes over six movies, you know, like, um, yeah. and the same thing is for me. Um, this is why I need, we, we need super fast double bass here. And then we need uh, the tempo to drop. And then we need, I don't know. We just, after we had like tons of obscure riffs, we maybe need one riff that's really catchy and maybe will uh, a riff that has not been heard 20 times over the last 20 years. And um, it, to me, that's, that's the most important thing ever. And then if I would hear music like that in its fucking uh, electronic trip hop, it would probably be my favorite band, you know? But what I'm hearing mostly in, in, in death metal is, okay, this guy's even faster. He hits even harder. Um, I don't know. This is even more aggressive or, but yeah, as you said, it's, at some point you 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 can't pile on to that, you know? It, yeah. And I don't know how long it will stay interesting. Yeah. Um, Other yeah. things suffer, you know, when it when it when that's yeah. when that sort of thing starts taking oxygen out of the room, the other the other parts of the song suffer. And I, I really am glad to hear you guys say that coming from the brutal death metal scene, because one thing that's really bothered me my whole life, and I, and I was guilty of it when I was young, is this idea that listening to this really heavy music makes you a tough guy. And then there's value judgments put on people, you know, like one of my favorite insults ever, <laughs> when I was talking to a friend of mine about a band, he's like, oh, that's a band my girlfriend would listen to. It's like this, he, he denigrated them because of, you know, a female might like that, that music or something. And that, that's funny, That's it's funny for, for friends to get together and, you know, in private, make jokes about bands and everything. But I've, I, I I always rejected that idea that li me listening to death metal makes me a tough guy because lots of people that are not tough guys at all, listen to death metal. And, you know, my, my neighbors that own the farm down the road, you know, like, so I'm a farmer and I would say that makes me way tougher than the music I listen to. And this guy is a retired, sure special forces guy and he doesn't listen to metal at all. Am I going to say that he's not a tough guy? You know, like, I don't like this idea that the music we choose to listen to is some sort of, uh, let me hit my head with the mic. I'm a big caveman. Like, I mean, that's fun. Yeah. I, I like, I like the nerdy part of metal. You know, I, I like the stories and the darkness and, and of course I love, uh, you know, I'm a man. I like all that stuff, but I just, I don't like this. Oh, you listen to that. You're not a tough guy. I listen to this. I am a tough guy. And it's like, well, the things you do in your life is what makes you a tough guy or not. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, yeah, that sounds right. And, and, and I mean, like, I mean, at its core, like death metal originally was kind of like stripping back on all the like fashion tropes of heavy metal music at the time. And just going back to blue jeans, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. True. And plus, like, with the whole, like, oh, like, you know, the the, the, the flashy stage stuff, it's like, de Defeated Sanity in particular, like, we're writing music where we, we, we're we all basically playing at a high threshold of our musical ability, not the absolute top of our our ability, but pretty high up there. So we're not, like, we're not sitting there thinking about stage moves and, like, am I going to hit my head with a, <laughs> with a microphone at, at this exact time in the song? Like, I'm thinking about the songs. Like, I'm 100% absorbed into the music, you know? So 
Yeah. I'm not, uh, it, we're, we're not choreographing, you know, like, yeah. We're playing music. It's, yeah. If we, if we, uh, arrange anything, it's, it's because I haven't said I, I don't love animal power, you know, like, of course it's fucking amazing, but yeah. to me, it's like, it, I want to generate that by the music, you know, if, if it's like, there's been a whole lot of riffs going on and then there's it's like that's like when the when the when the audience really get like the audience has been waiting for this riff you have to write a riff that the audience is waiting for and then it's like as i said it's a, a little bit like this overwhelming feeling where people drop and stuff this is the overwhelming people uh, where the movement starts and people basically uh, uh, they they kicked over the the drum set in in Manila, <laughs> where it, you know, like <laughs> it's like they everything got like too heavy, too you know, it's like it got almost overwhelming. So like, but I want to do that with the music and not with gimmicks, you know, yeah. and um. And, but I mean, I, I'm also the first to, to say, like, I, I've been at, I just came from Death Feast, actually. And, um, for example, I saw Putridity and I saw Disavowed and I'm, 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 I'm thinking, how the hell can they play double bass this quick? It's, it's insane. You know, I, I don't want to devalue that at all, but, um, those bands are great, you know? But if you put that into a band that doesn't have something cool, then that double kick gets kind of useless, yeah. you know, it's yeah. because it's, it's not really about that. It's, uh, I enjoyed that Putridity song uh, uh, show because it was so over the top, just like, you know, it's, it's just Putridity. It's, it's, it's fucking extreme as fuck, you know, and then uh, I, I guess you need the double kicks for that. But... Um, yeah, I, it it always uh, just um, depends on how you weave it into the concept of the band, you know, and, and, and the music. And yeah, I I feel like it, I don't know if we can make another decade with like making the BPMs faster. Or I I don't <laughs> think that's gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> The, the need to, I feel like it's also this just modern day need for people to be able to like quantify something. So it's mm. like, oh yeah, two, 280 BPM, like let's go, like who cares? Like, mm -hmm. like in and of itself, who cares? But hey, if you're going to hit 280 BPM during like this sick friggin' groove, awesome. But right. at that point, at that point, it's all musical context. It's not the fact that he's going 280, 280 BPM that's what's sick it's the context in which it's happening you know agreed agreed you know a lot of those bands that do reach that high level bpm mathematically they're the fastest bands that are out there but it doesn't mm -hmm. sound faster to me than that riff and battery that riff sounds super fast to me because of the mm -hmm. context that it's in or, or or you know the machine gun riff and one you know that's like all of us learned how to play that riff growing up and it's sort of elementary <laughs> at this point, but it, yeah. it still sounds so fast to me, even though I know mathematically those other bands are faster. Yeah. It's, it's got a drive, you know, I, I call that like a, a drive and it, it's just a perfect invention in the right moment. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's, and then with one, you can say it's, it's a, you know, the, dramatic development of the lyrics too you know like everything like mm -hmm. if you're a real fan you 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 know everything about that song and then it just like that's the culmination of that story you know and it, and it, you see that that that's what we're about maybe maybe uh, it's hard to believe for some but it's it's still in the core it's it's the same thing and um uh uh, uh you know with with opeth it might be more obvious you know but um you know if we've we've been crushing our brains over over decisions like that you know like 
we, we've been working on songs for months and months and months and couldn't think of a title, couldn't think of uh, the right word that could fit, uh, I don't know, three chops on the, on the symbol or something, you know? So it's, um, I guess what we're just saying is like, while other bands like, you know, if you listen to Feetopsy, that's a speed band. That's like, that's insane speed. They've got, like John Ingman is like one of the, the, the fastest drummers on the, on the snare. Like if you want to check that out, it's just like extreme speed. They've got that. That's very, it's very, although I have the highest admiration for that, you know, because I do, but that's a very quick way to go. Oh my God, this is amazing, you know? Mm. But that's why I said, remember when I said, like, we suffer from this. Our specialty is something very subtle, something very hidden, and that's composition, always has been. And <clears throat> I don't think metal, other than prop metal fans or, like, yeah, pe maybe people that listen to Opeth and stuff and, and uh, Symphony X or, you know, psychotic walls and stuff like this um maybe there's not too many people that really care about that it's more about the this is aggressive this is uh grindcore he screams and uh does yeah. this and, you know or the, it's about the arms uh, race of extremity yeah or watain you know pig's blood and uh, cutting off a goat's head on on stage yeah. or, I, I, or I, naked I, naked people yeah. No. That's one thing that I'm I'm loving about the black metal scene right now is is all of that Satan stuff has been done so much that now we're getting bands like Gearia and and in you know uh Panopticon and that are you know you're not doing the Satan thing anymore because the other bands have already done it so well. What are you gonna add to the ethos of black mm -hmm. metal if you just scream satan during the chorus now and yeah, so they, they've actually started to run away from that arms race of extremity and i feel like it's even more rebellious is the wrong word um it's like it's more of an abjection to explore other areas besides just you know fuck god or whatever yeah it's um I think it's a problematic time, really, for 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 metal, uh, for 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 death metal, the black metal, everything, because I don't know. For me, it's, for me, it's hard to find something that really sounds fresh, you know. <clears throat> but maybe I haven't looked into that new black metal stuff enough. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it seems like. Um, this this music has to kind of grow up a little bit, and I I feel a lot like especially some of the old guys don't have the tools for that. The old guys were fucking stupid when they were like teens, had this weird <laughs> fucking energy, and had the stupid ideas that were completely new. Was a new movement and not a trend. It was a movement. Um, and was fucking amazing and it, it's very hard to even like for me it's hard to you know how do you even top the aside legion you know it's like why are we even doing this and um but yeah it's 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 i think uh screaming i don't know do, do, doing the serial killer thing or the satanist thing or something it's uh it's just not possible anymore really you know mm. like Sometimes I'm sitting there like, oh, man, I want to write a cool old school riff, man. And like, I can't. I can't. This is, it's hard to do. And I think that um, something that should clue in the metal community about exactly what you're talking about is we're in America here. We're going through the satanic panic again, and it's not metal bands. It's all these pop stars that are getting society to clutch their pearls. You know, people are saying Taylor Swift is – corrupting the youth satan and sam smith and 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 uh, uh yeah nikki minaj you know and and all the metal bands are like just nobody's worried about it and i think that should really say something to the metal communities like 
You know, it's just screaming about Satan ain't gonna cut it anymore. It's like the boy who cried yeah. wolf, you know? Yeah. The boy who yeah. cried Satan. <laughs> <laughs> the genre that cried Satan. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's um for me, but it's like um maybe we're at the crossroads where like does metal have the the format to go like okay you know you go to the renaissance and this is this guy called palestrina and he wrote these kind of chorals you know and then mm. i don't know like was it like 100 years later or something where what are we talking about like josh you know the fucking we're going to i'm going to look like a fool where how much later was bach than palestrina you know that oh, i mean wasn't palestrina like middle ages middle ages yeah so yeah. yeah, so Bach is like at least like 150 years later, no? Okay, so we're talking about 150 years. years where there's like a crazy music. And then I know, know that Bach was very much um, inspired by Palestrina. So we're talking about 150 years. So after 150 years, the real big, how do you call it? Uh, the The big icon of music began you know so does metal have this format to 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 maybe we're just like the the louis armstrong of what later became you know miles davis and fusion or whatever you know so so we're all paving the you know way for I mean? the best metal band ever <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean i mean that's uh that, that's an optimistic uh mindset to have you know that like i really hope in 50 years that like the in death metal there's somebody doing something so sick that i couldn't have even imagined it that thought is amazing you know yeah yeah that's what i'm saying like maybe uh we were just like all these years uh you know what are we talking about like maybe like 30 years of of, of death metal maybe 40 but yeah yeah about maybe 40 years Maybe there was just like fucking around, very primitive beginnings. And now, you know, I'm one of the first people that say, yeah, but what about composition, you know? And then um, it starts to become serious music. I don't know, you know, but it's uh, uh, it's something I uh, maybe dream about. And um, I would say the songs that we have written in the last, uh, I don't know, 10 years, uh, definitely our compositions, you know? Yeah. I can definitely hear that. And, and like I said, I, I listened to the last album and, and this one y'all got coming out Chronicles of Lunacy and I, I can hear the movement. And so now I want to go back and check out your, your back catalog. And I, I have this feeling that when I do, I'm going to be surprised. Uh, I, just just the difference between that record and this record i feel like I, if i go back to like the first one it's gonna be like oh this isn't the same band would you agree with that i would i would, I would disagree I, I i would say you, you could definitely hear that it's the same band at least the same the same creative mind at work you know you can hear that musically speaking even though the style is a little different or mm -hmm pretty different not even a little different it's pretty different it's more uh when you go back to the very first defeated sanity album uh, prelude it's very much in that kind of old school death metal style with not so deep of vocal um and the production is definitely more of like what would be fitting at the time um but i think you can hear within five ten seconds that oh yeah it's defeated sanity 100 percent. you know mm. this, is, this is making uh -huh. me excited <laughs> In a way, yeah, but but yeah, I wanted to say Prelude is is where you you definitely hear um, a big difference when it comes to the to the next album. After that, we kind of found our style, but I mean, yeah, we broke our style uh, for the disposal and Dharmata uh, split thing. So that that's gonna be definitely a surprise. So uh, maybe you should check that out. Okay. <laughs> well, definitely. Yeah. Well, once again, Chronicles of Lunacy coming out 
November 22nd. I'm stoked for it. And do you have a U.S. tour, maybe on the East Coast, possibly, to support the record? Can't announce anything yet. I can't. Yeah. Let's put it this way. There's nothing There's nothing currently in the works for the U.S. because we toured the U.S. so heavily these past few years. Mm. Um, basically, since COVID ended, we, we've done the U.S., I'd say, what, three times now, Lilith? Yeah. Yeah, three, three solid U.S. tours in the U.S. since we got back on the saddle in 2022. Um, so we're actually going to try to hit some other markets right when the album comes out, and then there will be the U.S. coming up in the relatively near future. Very good. Yeah, I would I would say 2025 we we have to be in the US, right? Josh, it's it's pretty Yeah, it's pretty probably mandatory. later. Later in the year, I think is yeah. is the idea. But yeah, nothing yeah. nothing is currently in the works for it. Yeah, but it sounds like something we kind of have to do. Yeah, I like will the sound happen. of that. I like the sound it of that. Happen. Well, when you guys are in Georgia, holler at your boy. We'll definitely be there. Crack my Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we should be in Atlanta at least. Yeah. That's yeah, that's my market right there. I would hope Got, so. Drive awesome. two hours up there, break my neck, <laughs> come home. Yeah. The last awesome. show in Atlanta was great. The last show in Atlanta oh, was, was pretty amazing. Awesome. It was it was Trevor amazing. Was there. Yeah, we rem- yeah, I remember that. Like that was the last time we saw Trevor. And yep. it I it it is kinda heartbreaking in a way because like he'd always would tell me like fuck man i always miss you guys i never see you guys play and then he was at that show and he was i i could see he was like so happy to be like he was like in the front row all the time you know like people mm-hmm. would slam into him and he would just be like <laughs> and then uh-huh. and then man then that was it at like a month later or something yeah crazy shit man yeah yeah, you have to you have to appreciate these moments because who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Exactly. Well, let's end on a positive note. Chronicles of Lunacy, November 22nd. I will definitely be covering it then. This this will probably air like two weeks before that. And I'll I'll actually be in Germany. So I, I want to thank you guys for doing this because it gives me something to have in the can for that time period and very much good luck with the release. And I hope to see you in Atlanta soon. Fuck yeah. Thank you, man. 